Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So what we're going to be talking about this week is what's called a nose touch. So the nose touch is what's called a targeting behavior. So we're asking our dogs to place one of their body parts their nose, their paw, for this video example, it's going to be their nose, onto a specific targeted spot that we have predetermined. Okay, so for the nose touch, that is going to be our hand. So basically what this behavior ends up looking like is you're gonna present that target to your dog, and then your dog is going to come up and actually touch their nose onto your hand. It becomes a very deliberate touch, and most dogs will kind of actually like bump into your hand very quickly like that, that's the entire behavior that we're going for here. So you're probably sitting there thinking, why would I teach a nose touch? Okay, this sounds really stupid. Why would I ever need my dog to go bump my hand with their nose, right? Okay, I was in your position. I know it sounds stupid. Hang with me though, okay? I promise you it's gonna be one of your dog's favorite behaviors by the end of this video. And it's going to be a very versatile one to use in many different situations with your dog. So number one, it's a really fun interactive game with your dog. It's gonna actually strengthen your relationship with your dog, which is what everybody wants. So number two, and probably the biggest reason why I like to teach this behavior, is to teach our dogs what to do when someone comes up to them with an outstretched hand, trying to say hello to the dog, okay? So this right now I'm gonna tell you, you guys, I, you will never ever see me greet a dog like this. That's actually a huge invasion on that dog's space and that is a really good way to get your hand bit, okay? Kids, adults, goes for everybody. I'd really suggest not introducing yourself to a dog by stretching out your hand to allow them to sniff. What we can do though is teach our dogs and equip our dogs with the right tools to know what to do with that outstretched hand. All right, so number three, this can be a really good foundation behavior to teach a number of other behaviors. You guys can include this in your recall training, getting your dog to come to you when you call them, okay? You can teach tricks with this. You can teach your dog to spin in a circle. It's gonna be really good for getting your dog not dependent on food being right at their nose. Also really good for teaching loose leash walking, for keeping your dog nicely next to you, for getting your dog back to you, for moving your dog to different sides. Okay, if you are walking down the street and a dog is approaching you on the left side and you need to maneuver your dog to the other side, you can quickly do a nose touch to get them to the other side. No force necessary by dragging them on the leash to get them to the other side. We can do it force free. Okay, I just wanna talk about the cues for a second. All right, so we're gonna add a verbal cue touch into this behavior at the very end of this video, but it also obviously is on like a hand signal as well, okay? So if your dog knows how to shake paws, I would suggest not doing your flat hand because that can get really confusing to a lot of dogs. What you can switch it to, my dog's touch cue is actually three fingers, okay? That also can get a little confusing, three fingers, two fingers versus a whole hand. A little bit hard to differentiate. What I see a lot of people do is like an actual fist bump. It's like super cute, okay? With their dog, they can actually like fist bump their nose with their dog. I find a lot of people like that one. So you guys can do what you'd like to, okay? I'm gonna show you guys with Wrigley's touch cue kind of what this behavior looks like, okay? So I present the touch, she goes over to move her nose towards it and actually touch my hand with it, okay? How you start teaching this, you guys, is eventually I would like your dog to be able to come across the room and touch your hand presented across the room, but for right when we're teaching it, they're not gonna know what to do with that hand. So where you start with this behavior is actually you're just going to pick a cue, pick a hand cue, okay? those three fingers, and you're gonna present it right next to your dog's nose. I'm talking like a millimeter away, not an inch, like a millimeter, okay? So most dogs, especially if you've been giving them treats beforehand, are going to be interested naturally in that hand and move their nose over in that direction. You are either going to click for that movement over to your hand. If you don't quite get the whole nose touching your hand, that's okay. Click for the action of your dog moving their nose in that general direction. Okay, we are looking for our dogs to physically touch our hands with their nose, but if they're not doing that right away, or maybe they lick your hand, that's okay. We'll kind of build up to explicitly the nose touch. But you're gonna present it like right at your dog's nose, so they don't even really have an option 
as to where they're gonna go with it, okay? So I don't know if you can see here, Wrigley is kinda licking my hand a little bit. When you're first teaching this, I would take that, okay? Any interaction with your hand gets a click in a treat, okay? Now, if my dog were to present her paw, I kinda take my hand away and then represent it again right next to her nose. Okay, over time what you wanna start doing is clicking before that tongue comes out. So you guys, I don't have any treats in my hand when I'm doing this. I'm asking my dog to interact with an empty hand, which makes this behavior even more challenging for a lot of dogs, especially really food motivated dogs. Okay, but like I said, this is gonna really be good for those dogs to learn that they don't need a treat right at their nose to get rewarded for something, all right? So, once your dog is doing well with that, okay, you're gonna move your hand to different positions around their head. The side of their face, above their head, all right? When you guys do that one, I place it in a way that when your dog lifts their head up, they're accidentally going to bump their nose into your hand anyways makes it easier for them. Okay, next step to this is you wanna increase the distance from your dog's nose. So I'm gonna move it out from her nose about an inch or so, okay? We're gonna take this pretty slow. Again, I'm increasing the distance just by a little bit, not a whole lot, a whole huge range, but just enough so she has to physically move her head in the direction of my hand. Now, you guys, she's moving her nose towards my hand pretty quickly. At first, you're probably gonna have to wait your dog out a little bit, okay? So just present that hand cue and hold it there really still. Wait for your dog to interact with it. And further out still, you see how she's really reaching for that one. Because I'm starting to build in some more distance to it. So as she's coming back to me, I'm gonna take advantage of that and present that touch cue. Okay, so same thing, I'm just gonna hold my hand out. Now I'm just requiring her to move a little bit closer to my hand herself. I'm not gonna present it right next to her nose. If your dog is distracted all by the clicker, try putting it behind your back. Okay, now she's just really close to me, so what I'm gonna do is reset her, toss the treat away. Okay, present that touch cue out front. All right, so she's getting it pretty well now, okay? So once your dog gets to this point, we're gonna start adding the verbal cue into it. Now, how you guys are gonna do this is I want you to take a treat, toss it away. As your dog's coming back, touch, then present the hand. So touch first, then present that hand. Touch. And treat away, touch. she's kind of coming from a longer distance away. I'm kind of pairing it with tossing a treat away. And as she's coming back and looking at me, that's when I'm presenting the touch cue to her. Touch. Touch. that you can do and you can teach your kids to do is just to remain still okay just pretend like the dog is not even there 
I get a lot of people, a lot of clients tell me like, oh, you can pet my dog and you know, you can, do you hate my dog? You can really interact with them. Okay, I'm actually being super polite to that dog. Me just standing there real casual, like ignoring the dog that is already really uncomfortable about my presence there is taking the pressure off of that dog. Okay, it's kind of like the introverted person that wants no one to pay attention to them. It's the same thing, okay? Until that dog gets to know you and warm up to you a little bit better, we don't need to get down on the ground and you know, get our hands all in that dog's face until they get to know us better. If that dog wants to interact with you, it will. If it does not, it will not. Okay, dogs don't really fake around with this kind of stuff. It's important that we make that distinction. If we see a dog that's sitting next to their owner and they're clearly not coming up to us, that dog is asking for space. That dog is clearly not wanting our attention. I want you guys to kind of think of those shy nervous dogs like those people that don't like direct attention on them and need a little bit longer to warm up to you. Our dogs are just the same, especially for the dogs, like I said, that are a little bit more nervous of people. For the dogs that are really excited about people, it kind of flip flops and goes a little bit of a different way. That outstretched hand to those dogs are gonna get those dogs probably super excited. So instead of those dogs pouncing on the person and like pummeling them just out of excitement, we can teach our dogs to nicely walk up to the person, touch their hand, and then wait for the reward afterwards. Much, much preferable behavior to them bulldozing through that person, trying to jump on them, look at their face. Instead, hey, I just want you to go touch that person's hand. That's the behavior, that's how you greet people. Shout out to those who have made it this far. I know this video was a lot of talking, but I do hope you guys got something out of it to go home and practice with your dogs. Speaking of which, I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next Thursday. Happy training.